The immune system defends our body against infection and disease and consists of many different cells that each perform distinct functions. Killer T cells are one very important component of the immune system. Here in blue, we can see some killer T cells through the microscope. Killer T cells actively patrol the body, searching for anything foreign that shouldn't be there, such as infection and other diseases. We are now looking at the magnified surface of a killer T cell. These cells have special receptors on their cell surface that can recognise and latch onto foreign particles on the surface of abnormal or infected cells. Here, a molecule called MHC1 on the surface of an abnormal cell presents foreign particles that can be detected by the killer T cell receptor. The T cell receptor then binds to these foreign particles, with a second receptor binding event stabilising the connection. The process is occurring again on the left and in the background. After initial detection of the foreign signal, the T cell receptor assemblies then cluster together. We will now move below the cell surface, inside the killer T cell. These long glowing chains form the internal part of the T cell receptor. These chains begin the complex signalling process that activates the killer T cell after receptor binding and clustering. The killer T cell is then ready to attack. The killer T cell shown here in green releases deadly toxins which destroy the abnormal cells, which turn red. Killer T cells are therefore a very important defence mechanism against disease and are constantly on the lookout for abnormalities and foreign invaders. Here are some different killer T cell surface receptors. Killer T cells can also differentiate between normal and abnormal cells by using surface checkpoint molecules to look for matching checkpoints on other cells to which it can bind. Once bound, the other cell is seen as normal and won't be harmed by the killer T cell. Now we can see some cancer cells through a microscope. Cancer cells have changes in their DNA which make them multiply out of control. These changes make cancer cells different than normal cells. So why doesn't our immune system recognise and kill them? Cancer cells can develop many clever ways of hiding from our immune system. One way they do this is to avoid recognition by killer T cells through MHC1 and the T cell receptor. On the left, we see the surface of a cancer cell. Cancer cells can avoid recognition by reducing the number of MHC1 molecules on their surface that would normally alert killer T cells to them. This means that detection and killing of cancer cells by killer T cells is impaired. Another way cancer cells can avoid detection is by tricking killer T cells into seeing them as normal. As we have learned, killer T cells can bind to checkpoints on another cell to determine if the cell is normal. On the left, we see a cancer cell displaying many checkpoints on the cell surface, sending a false signal to killer T cells that the cancer cell is normal and to leave it alone. These are just two of the many ways cancer cells can evade our immune system. So, is there a way that we can re-educate a patient's own T cells to make them better at recognising and attacking cancer cells. One approach is called chimeric antigen receptor T-cell, or CAR T-cell therapy. The process begins with filtering the patient's blood through a machine that collects T-cells and other white blood cells. In the laboratory, specially designed particles are mixed with the patient T-cells. 
Here, we are looking at the patient T-cells through a microscope. We are now looking at the magnified T-cell surface with some different receptors. The special particles make contact. The particles bind to the receptors on the T-cell surface. The particles are then taken inside, introducing genetic instructions that tell the cells what to do. The T-cells are instructed to produce special receptors called chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs, on their surface, making them into CAR T-cells. The CARs consist of different components that occur naturally in cells, but which are never found together. The CARs sit on the surface of the cell and are engineered to recognise and attach to a patient's cancer cells via the binding domain. We will now move below the cell surface The signalling domain inside the cell is similar to that in the naturally occurring killer T-cell receptor. Once the CAR T-cell is bound, CAR signalling domains begin a chain of events which activates its killer function to destroy cancer cells. A CAR is therefore a modular combination of cell recognition components and signalling components all in one. These specially tailored CAR T-cells are then grown in the laboratory until they number in the billions, producing an individualised army of cancer-killing T-cells. When numbers are sufficient, the specialised CAR T-cells are infused back into the patient. Here, we can see some green CAR T-cells through a microscope. Once they are in the body, the special receptors enable the CAR T-cells to seek out and recognise the patient's cancer cells. We are now looking at the magnified surface of a CAR T-cell in contact with a cancer cell. The CARs can directly bind to specific markers on the patient's cancer cells, shown in yellow, overcoming the need for MHC1 to be present. The bound CARs then cluster together. We will now move below the cell membrane. Here, we are looking inside the CAR T-cell at the CAR signalling domains. The binding interaction has activated the signalling domains, beginning a chain of events which activates the CAR T-cell. Once activated, the green CAR T-cells release toxic chemicals into the cancer cells, which kills them, indicated in red. CAR T-cells are known as serial killers because they can kill, release and move on to kill other cancer cells in a cycle that can occur multiple times. This makes them very effective in the fight against cancer. CAR T-cells can remain in the body and will reactivate if the cancer returns, even years later. Based on 25 years of original research on CAR T technology at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre, we are the first site in Australia fully licensed to conduct the whole CAR-T process from beginning to end, enabling fast and cost-effective delivery of this revolutionary treatment. Our vision is to make CAR-T cell therapy readily available to people in Australia and the Asia-Pacific region, eliminating our reliance on overseas manufacturing. Just as we contributed to the design of the original car structure, we remain at the forefront of global research into improving the effectiveness of CAR T cell therapy. Currently, CAR T therapy is only approved for the treatment of blood cancers. Our next big challenge is developing this therapy to treat solid tumours such as lung, breast and colon cancers. In the future, we hope to develop CAR T-cells as an off-the-shelf solution 
for a wide range of different cancers. For some patients, CAR-T therapy has proven to be a miracle treatment. I was um, put into palliative care and um, luckily for me, the CAR T cell trial came along. It literally ate the lymph node, the leukemia in my lymph nodes away. And by that stage, we knew it was doing something. And then a month later, I was given the all clear from cancer. At Peter Mac, we are striving to develop CAR T therapy to make it accessible, affordable, and applicable to as many cancer types as possible. I've lost a lot of friends. Uh, who haven't met eligibility criteria for trials or who just haven't had any other options to turn to. So this will give you know, more people the chance to live and I think that's fantastic. <laughs>